woke up this morning and got up with the rising sun. Three little birds perched on my doorstep, singing sweet song, melody pure and true. Singing, this is my message to you. Don't worry about a thing. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow, there's like a buzz in the air today. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Kauai. My name is Michelle May, and I'm on the Board of Trustees. I'm a practitioner intern, and I'm going to be sharing all the great things that we have going on here at CSL. So today, directly after service, we're going to have our monthly wrap with the Revs. So we invite you to stay and join us. It's all about learning about our spiritual journey getting us here to CSL. And we are going to start about 15 minutes after service. We want to start, start our after service activities a little bit earlier. So we will still have a hospitality but then you'll be invited to either stay or go. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> and we'll do it gently and nicely, but make a decision. <laughs> but we invite you to stay for that. It's been wildly popular, and it's been great to get to know our, fe uh, our fellow spiritual journeyers here. And then, starting this week, we have a great new whoa. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> we have a great new class that we're, that Reverend Rita is going to be doing all about improv. So improvisation, it's been requested. It brings their theory theatrical background right here in play and in fun. And so please join us. It is limited to 20 participants, so please do sign up if you are interested. It's going to be four Tuesdays in a row, but you can come to whichever ones you can, but do sign up in the, uh, at the information table. There's a sign-up sheet for that, and it starts June 5th, and it's from 6.30 to 8, and again, that's four Tuesdays in a row, improvisation with Reverend Rita. We're very excited for this. And then another brand new workshop that Re Reverend Patrick's going to be doing <laughs> that we're all very excited about as well. It's going to be two Thursdays starting on the 14th and it's claiming and celebrating your rite of passage with childlike wonder. So it's all about going deeper into yourself and if you're into that then this workshop is definitely from you for you and that'll be two hours. That'll be six to eight on June 14th and the 21st. So mark those on your calendar. All the dates are also in the program that you received and then a very very special mark your calendars. We are having an Ohana meeting. We're calling it our we're calling our family together, and this is all about moving forward to bring this vision about into reality. So we invite all of you to come, because this is going to be very important. We want your input, because that happens with all of us. So please join us. That's going to be June 24th, and that's going to be directly after service as well. So we'll be chatting about it a little more as the month progresses, but please put that on your calendar and join us on June 24th. And then Lydgate, there is going to be the Lydgate cleanup again. We were going to do that for Earth Day, then due to all the floodings, they changed the date. Now it's June 16th at 7.30 a.m. We do gather uh, those of you who want to join. We kind of have like a CSL team when we're there, but there is a sign-up sheet for that on the information table as well. All right, everybody, well, enjoy your service, and I'd like to introduce Reverend Rita and Reverend Patrick. Welcome, everyone. Uh. Oh, my God. I'm so, like, uh, lit today. I feel lit. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am lit. Okay. CSL Bar and Grill, <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh, so yeah. uh, we like to start with the lighting of our peace candle and um, taking a moment to recognize that 
that thing called peace begins right where we are, right here in the heart of us. So let's just center in our heart space right now. Oh, and breathe into that space and recognize that peace that is really our true identity and knowing that as we identify it within ourselves and bring it out into our experience and into this world. We are the beacons of peace. So let's take a moment of silence. And just staying right here and now, sending that love out, that knowing out that all is well, no matter what is occurring. All is well because behind it all is a divine perfection that is making itself known right here and right now within each of us and through each of us in our lives and out into the world. So I just know that is the truth and I let everything else just fall away into the nothingness from which it came, knowing it has nothing to support it. All that is, is love, God, peace. And so I just release it, I let it go, as we affirm together. And so it is. Hey, do you mind moving that back? No, not at all. So um, for those of you that are here for the first time and might not know us, as Michelle introduced us, Reverend Rita and Reverend Patrick, we're also married, just so you know. Sometimes I have to say it every once in a while because people don't realize it because we have two different last names. Well, although I'm using my hyphenated name now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I just, it's complicated because so my name is. is so long and when you have to recite it to people, it's like crazy. Anyway, but um, you are in a center for spiritual living. And it's so interesting because we ask our practitioner candidates, um, we just did a panel for some pa practitioner candidates in Los Angeles, and they're supposed to give an elevator spe speech on what is the science of mind. I realize that's what I do every Sunday. So, um, yeah, so here we are in the Center for Spiritual Living, Kauai, which practices the science of mind and spirit, which I am now knowing is Gnostic wisdom. So we are Gnostics. <laughs> And we practice Gnosticism. Did you know that? Which is also known as quantum physics. So the science of mind and spirit is not something new, although we call it new thought. It is a ancient wisdom that's been around for a long time. And the only reason we call it new thought, at least the only reason I call it new thought, is because I know that uh, we can change our thought in any moment and have a new thought and therefore change our life. And that's it. Well, I just want to throw a little Gnostic in there because we, we were discussing it this weekend. And it is really great because it's that idea that nothing was ever outside of ourselves. And so there was an entire movement going on before the movement. And so um, it, it was just a really a, a very cool feeling to go, oh, to really explore that. I think the name of the book was... Oh, it's um, called It's All God. It's All God. I'm going to get it in the bookstore. And it's just wonderful. It's so anyway, that was an inspiring weekend that we had. But if you're here for the first time, and I know a couple people that are, and I, I never pull people out and point them out, but Ken and Lynn are in this audience. <laughs> And, and they're right back there, and, and along with the new people, but, but they were the very first center we went to, Spirit Works, and it wasn't even called Spirit Works then. And it's just amazing to see all of these years gone by. 20 for, years. 20 years. And to think that we look exactly the same as we did <laughs> when we first met. So welcome, that's their first time. But who else is here for the very first time? A little... There we go. You looked so familiar when I saw yeah, you. I you went, do. oh my gosh, that's a. So we have them. We have anyone else. Well, what else? are their names now that we've called Lynn? Do you want to tell us your names? <laughs> Conrad. Conrad. 
and Cynthia. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, uh, the whole reason we did all of that was just because we know some things about you, and we'd like to share them with everyone in the uh, congregation here. And so, so we start? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You are magnificent. And you are relieved, I know, especially these two back there going, what are they going to say about us? But we know that about you because we know that about ourselves. Just like with peace, we can't have peace if we don't have peace within us first. So we know our magnificence, so we recognize yours. So shall we say it all together? I am magnificent. And speaking of magnificent, there's a wonderful man back there that looks very, very official with that camera. That's Rob, and that's Charles next to him. John is back there. But what's happening right now is that what happens here in this room doesn't stay in this room because we are live streaming and there are a lot of people that tune in weekly to be able to be a part of our wonderful Ohana. And so we have to say something to them and let them know who they are as they're all comfy in their living rooms with their coffee. and their Anyway, you are magnificent. magnificent. Now look to your left, to your right, go somewhere, let somebody know who they are. You are magnificent. <coughs> You are. Um, I didn't know. Magnificent. Okay, let's stand up and join Maria Christina. Everybody, and Luis let's stand on our song. magnificent feet. right now and nowhere else, leaving, leaving the past behind, knowing the future is unknown. I know that right here and right now is all there is. And right here and right now, what I know is that that spirit, that love, that thing I call God is right where I am, right where each and every person in this room is and beyond that, every creature, every plant, every animal, all of it, it's all God. And I'm so grateful to know that. I'm grateful to know that today, today we get to know that in even greater way that we open up. I am knowing and claiming that we open up to even more of who and what we are. So this month's theme is stepping up. And I'm stepping up. And I know that we step up into that one consciousness, that one love, and let ourselves expand and experience life in an even greater way. So I just know that. I claim it. I announce it. I accept it. And I allow it. And I just take this word with gratitude in my heart. And I release it into law, knowing that law says yes to me and yes to all of us as we affirm together and so it is. We are ever open. Love is healing everything. We are ever open and rising up to spread our way. We're all one in love. We're all one in love. All that we made of. Let your light shine, let your love light shine. Let your light shine, let your love light shine. Let your light shine, let your love light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine, let your love light shine. Let your light shine, let your love light shine. Let your light shine, let your love light shine. Let your light shine. Good morning. My name is Roseanne Jones, and I am a licensed, a certified licensed practitioner here at CSL. 
And it's my privilege today to lead you into meditation, a quiet time where you can listen to that inner voice, where God speaks to each of us in that special place. So please just relax into your seats, settle in, feet on the ground, and know that you are in a safe place. And if you choose to close your eyes, fine, keep them wide open, you get to choose. But we're going to go into a quiet time. And before we go, I would like to read a quote that if you choose to take into this meditation, you can. And the quote is by Mahatma Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Enjoy your time.
best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And as you gently come back, come back to this space, what I know is that there is only one. And there is one power, one presence. It is the universal spirit that permeates everything, everywhere. It created the universe itself, the distant planets and stars and the close planets and our beloved sun and beloved planet. And this universal spirit is what I call God. And it works in and through each of us, always creating even creating more of a, an island called Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, creating through each of us. This is a spirit I call God. And what I know is that we are all unified in this one. We are connected in this universal intelligence of the of the entire universe and what I do know is that God is always doing everything in this space to serve us and every time we breathe we are breathing in and out the energy of God and keeping ourselves healthy and alive and moving for one purpose, for the creative energy and functioning of what this great source is, of what God is, always creating, always serving us. And what I know is that right here I declare that as God serves us in so many ways, we are served through perfect health, perfect being, perfect prosperity, abundance, perfect love, love in all relationships, joy, forgiveness, goodness, kindness, in all of these things, in all of these ways, we are served and we serve. I am so grateful for this knowledge that God is working in and through us at every moment, serving us, giving to us, and we are in that flow of life. So I, I know and accept this flow of goodness into each person's lives and I recognize that it's all up to us to raise our consciousness to understand that as we receive we also can give and so releasing that word into that amazing law of God that always says yes to our consciousness I'd like to have you affirm with me as we say together. And so it is. Turn to your programs. We have a beautiful chant by Etika Luckett and Lisa Ferrara.
right, so next up is one of the most special times, I believe, in our center when we get to welcome new members. And um, I'm just grateful because I know this next year, we're going into our fifth year, is really a time when we're all going to have to step up in consciousness. I'm not talking about anything but consciousness. And I know that the people that choose to, to do that, sometimes it's great to be part of a community, someplace where you can go, someplace where you can have support. And um, these people that we're, and all the people that have joined the center, they've chosen this as their home and their place to get that support and to give that support. So I, Patrick and I are both very appreciative of that. And we have to have one thing said, which is somebody filled out an application form and we couldn't really read it very well. And then I misplaced it in the move. So if that person's name doesn't get called, please raise your hand because I don't want to forget anyone. All right. So and I, it's, I it's figure so it's funny. always best to be honest and just say, yeah, you know exactly. what? We it's said, somewhere well, we in my box the somewhere. Truth. We lost it. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then I went, what a concept, right? <laughs> to just come out and say, go, if there's anyone who... Um, <laughs> no, we, we, we misplaced it. We <laughs> apologize. But please raise your hand if your name's not called. So um, we'd like to ask Roseanne to stay up and um, Michelle will come up um, oh, yeah. and Deb as a board member, if you guys could just kind of stand over there, that'll be a good place for you because it's gonna might get a little crowded. And Reverend Diane will be up here handing out the roses and you wanna move this? Okay, and here's your cards. Oops, let's get this out of the way because we're gonna have a few people up here. Yeah. All right, now we're all set. So we're trying to keep this organized. So Michelle will read off the names and Reverend Diane will hand out a beautiful rose and Roseanne will are you okay? <laughs> okay. It's all coming together. <laughs> okay, it's perfect. There's plenty of roses if we, there's a whole bunch back there too, so we're not gonna run out of anything. Um, okay, so that's basically it, and then when we're done, we'll do our special song that we're gonna sing to our new members. Yeah, okay, so um, if you could just play gently in the background, Maria, that would be nice. So as for us, yes. All right, the first I would like to welcome up is Walter Weiss. Yay! It's going to be a process. <laughs> it's like a receiving line. <laughs> Susan Wood. Margaret Frazier. Yay! <laughs> there you go. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, it has been a while. We just hadn't had a chance to honor you. <laughs> Remember, for a while, just wasn't here when we've done it. And I'll invite her husband, Duncan, as well. Kelly Ensign? Did Kelly come today? All right. Okay. We will. And then Ronnie Walker. I believe she's on the mainland as well. And then Kona Dawn Price. Come on down. <laughs> Surprise from the front row. <laughs> They've just officially moved and become members. So you've seen their faces. They've been coming. But I'd also like to bring up and introduce Reverend Dr. Peggy Price.
<laughs> Noel? Well? <laughs> and then I'm not sure. Lily Abraham, did Lily come today? Okay. And then also Anayat. I don't believe Anayat's here too, but just we want to say their name in consciousness and, and uphold them as new members as well and, and members to be honored. What we'll do is we'll move all the members front here, front and center. All right. So everybody can see them. You guys can kind of stand over there. That's good. This is great. Oh, how beautiful they are. Well, first, let's just give them a hand of applause. <laughs> And now we get to sing the face of God to them. And um, yeah, so Reverend Diane and Willie, the, the, um, the hand sign language. So let's go. You are the face of God. Where to start? <sighs> okay, so um, yeah, it's been quite a couple of months for me. <laughs> and um, we call this month Stepping Up because what I'm finding is happening is that I'm being uh, required to step up in my own consciousness and that something is burrowing, guys. <laughs> It's brewing real deep, and I know a lot of us can feel it. We're feeling a lot of like divine, what we call divine discontent, like we want to make changes. I'm seeing a lot of people making changes in their lives, really big ones too, huge ones. And um, it's what's so funny is, you know, we just, not funny, but interesting is my whole family moved this last, within the last six months, my whole family either bought houses or moved, you know, all of them, all my children. I, I was like, wow, okay, because moving's a big thing, right? And so there is something brewing. <laughs> yeah. Some friends move too <laughs> across the ocean. 
so yeah, so something's brewing, guys, and it's 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 this consciousness is is asking to to move through us in an even greater way, and it's always asking us. We call today, how can I serve? How can I serve you? And I wrote a blog this morning about um, about before I before you ask I sh before you call I shall answer or before you ask I shall answer. However, you know, remember the quote and. Um, how does that happen? How, does it, how do you get an answer before you call or before you ask? Well, because the answer is already there and everything needed for the answer is already there. And it's just the only thing we have to do is to open up to the answer and the answer is there. And I likened it in my blog this morning to ordering in a restaurant. <laughs> We've all been to restaurants, right? And we order, right? And they, there's a whole menu there. Everything's already there. We just have to choose what it is we want. And sometimes we, like, I know I have been and still am sometimes restricted by money. Like, I'll just go, oh, I'm going to, or especially if somebody else is treating me, I'll just go, oh, you know, I'll just, I'm just, I don't know, maybe it's the way I was brought up, but I'll just go, oh, what's the, you know, I don't want to spend too much money, blah, 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 or I'm on a budget and all that. Well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm getting more and more where I'm just opening up and saying, you know what, I'm really going to treat myself today. Uh, I'm really going to just have whatever I want. But the universe doesn't, act, uh, doesn't do that. The universe doesn't say you can only have this much. The universe says we, the universe is infinite. We can have it all. It's just a matter of can we embody it all? Can we claim it all? Can we, can we en envision it all? Can we conceive of it all? And Ernest Holmes has a quote in The Science of Mind. If you don't know who Ernest Holmes is, he is the founder of the science of mind or religious science or whatever you want to call it, who just basically put a whole bunch of stuff together and, and, and wrote a beautiful millions of books uh, about this thing called new thought. <laughs> Mil well, maybe not millions, but he, yeah. And if you have not read any of Ernest Holmes' writings, you should read them because you will just really get a lot out of them and, and, and he's very easy to understand. Well, at least for me. <laughs> There's a book in the bookstore actually called Creative Mind. That one's really easy. It's a very, very first book he ever wrote, and it's really easy to understand. But he says, we see abundance in the universe. We cannot count the grains of sand on a single beach. The earth con contains untold riches, and the very air is vibrant with power. I mean, we've all experienced that, right? I mean, I'm walking on the Kalia path or the coastal path, and I'm looking at the sugar cane. And, I'm, and since the rains, how many of them there are is just like enormous, right? Uh, when the, and then he asks, why then is man or woman weak, poor, or afraid? Why? The science of mind deals with these questions. And the answer to the question is, there's only one answer to that question, why we are, and the only answer is, is because we have choice. We have choice. And if we didn't have choice, we'd all be walking around as automatons <laughs> or robots, <laughs> I got it that time, <laughs> and we would just be saying, you know, yes, 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 and we wouldn't be thinking. But we have a mind, we have choice, and our spiritual evolution is all about choice, and it's all about embodying this thing called God to an even greater level. And when we talk about God, if you're new to this philosophy, we're not talking about a man in a cloud, we're actually talking about a presence that lives and breathes as us, through us. There is no separation ever. So, and that has no limits. It has no limits. We're the ones that put the limits there. So, I, and another thing I realized too, is we think sometimes when we're having an issue in our life that we're doing it ourselves. Like we're trying to make it happen with our minds. That's not what this is about. There is a creative medium. It's called, we call it the law of our being, the energy source of our being that makes things out of itself that is the creative energy that takes the impress of our thoughts and manifests it out into experience. So we don't do it. All we have to do is stay poised and accepting and allowing of those things. And then it takes it and makes it. And we don't know how. We don't know how. We have no idea. If we try to make it happen, I realize sometimes myself, I've been, uh, I, I, I even fall into that trap of trying to figure out how it's going to happen. It's not, you have no idea how it's going to happen. So if you're trying to manifest a house or, or, uh, or have more money or what, all those things that sometimes we want or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever, 
you just have to stay poised in what it is you want and clear. Sometimes we're not clear either. And then allow it to happen. Some people say, oh, I can't find a, you know, I can't find a, uh, you know, a partner on this island. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. Plenty of people have found partners on this island. But we just have to open up and take the how out of it. We call it the cursed house, Mike Dooley. So, and then we have to open up to, like I said, to even greater. And that's what we're doing is just opening up more and more and more. And so I have a friend, I'm not going to mention her name, she'll know who she is, but we were talking and she talked about that she did this exercise called um, standing on the edge, something like that. And she was, she was harnessed and um, with ropes and pulleys and all that kind of stuff and was to stand on the edge of this great cliff and just bend over and look out and just be suspended there. It wasn't a bungee jumping thing or any of that kind of thing, it was just basically it wasn't free falling, it was just there. And so as she was describing this, she said she did it once and she realized that she didn't actually let go. And so she had to go back and do it again. And when she did let go, when she went back, she said, she used the term, I took it all in. I took it all in. That is like really profound to me <coughs> because sometimes I think we tiptoe through life and we don't really take it all in. We don't really let it just fill us. Let it just become one with us. Let it just take it all in. And I, we are so blessed on this island to be able to be with nature and to be able to, but we can take it all in at anywhere. Like I've, I've stood, have you ever been in an airport and seen all these people like bustling around and all this life and you just like sit there? This is, I mean, I remember the last time I traveled and you just sit there and you're hearing all the noises and you're taking it all in. It's so immense. It's so immense and that's what we are. And the more that we can do that, the more our lives are going to open up. And the whole point of this, guys, is to be a service to this world. It's not for us to sit in our own little worlds taking it all in. It's for us to take it all in, expand ourselves, and then give it back out. Because this planet re needs us. We are this planet. We are each other. Well, I love singing that song, The Face of God, because when you really look in someone's eyes, you feel the oneness. You feel that there is no separation. And so, yeah. So the other thing is, is the work it takes. I've talked about this before, but I'm not going to keep reiterating it because it's not gonna, it doesn't just happen by doing it like once. It doesn't just happen by taking one class or, I mean, like, you know, I look at Ken and Lynn back there and I've known them for 20 years I've been working on this and I'm still working on this because there's always more and there's always deeper and there's always amazing things to, uh, to unfold and, and reveal within ourselves. So it's exciting. It's, it's work, but it is work. Like the Swami told us that day when we were visiting in January, he said the spiritual journey is not an easy journey because we have to stay with it. He told us the story a couple of weeks ago about how the, all the logs and everything came down into that beautiful pond they had there, and he was sitting there, and, and he was like, oh, my God, why is this happening? I, ca I can't even believe this is happening to us. And, but he kept affirming to himself that there was a divine perfection behind it all, that there was a divine perfection behind it all. There always is a divine perfection behind everything. And the pond got cleared. And he didn't know how but it was going to happen, but it happened in a, in a, in a way that he didn't know was going to happen that way because we get out of the way of the house and we just know there's divine perfection behind everything. We get out of the way of the house and we stay clear. I want a clear pond in my life. <laughs> you know, but, so, and then also that, that we have to be willing to do it. Like, we can't keep looking to the outside for it to happen for us. We have to actually take the responsibility. This teaching is all about taking responsibility. We actually, I had this experience <laughs> with Glenn, I'm going to call you out, but <laughs> Patrick and I bought a grill. I don't want to go too long, but we bought, I won't tell you the whole story, but we bought a grill for our house and we, uh, we just kept it in the box for the longest time. And finally it was like, we better get it out because Glenn and Marion are coming for dinner. We're going to use this grill, right? And so we waited until like three hours before they arrived. <laughs> thinking that this grill was just going to be a top and a bottom and we were going to take it. It was, from Co it was from Costco, so beware if you buy the KitchenAid grill there. It was, we were just going to take it out of the box and it was going to miraculously <laughs> come together. But, 
So we took it out of the box, Patrick and I, and we kept taking it out of the box and taking it out of the box after about a hundred screws and about two do or three dozen pieces, we realized we were in trouble. <laughs> so, but we tried. We tried to put it together. And then finally, you know, Glenn came to the rescue and he put it, <laughs> he put it together really fast. But I think that was fine. And I think in things like that, you know, sometimes I don't want to spend my time I don't want to spend my time doing things like that because I have other things I want to do and some peop other people can do it better, you know, and easier and faster. And why not rely on those people, right? I was, we were going to hire somebody and then he called. See how I, we, we didn't know how it was going to happen. He calls, I'll put your girl together because I want to eat that steak you're cooking. Okay. <laughs> and I don't want you to put it in the broiler. But anyway, so what I'm trying to say is that, um, yeah, so it's okay. But when it comes to our own spiritual work, Nobody can really do that for us. We could think that other people can do it, and there's no wrong, nothing wrong with getting help and all that because we do need help, but in the end, it all comes down to us. So when we see our life in pieces and a million screws <laughs> and all those things, <laughs> yes, we can get help, but eventually we are the ones that are going to have to put it back together. And there is a divine perfection behind it all. And now I will call Michelle Malame out because... <laughs> I'm calling all these people out. They're great teachers because, you know, she just did, uh, had a beautiful event in her life that manifested for her. And, you know, people tend to think that it just happened. And, sh and she said something like, they didn't see the four years that I spent clearing out all the, taking all the pieces and trying to get them back together and, and doing the spiritual work. They didn't see that. They just saw the manifestation and went, wow, isn't that nice? So, yeah, it takes work. And, and it's good work. It's wonderful work because what we're doing is we're getting to know ourselves. We're getting to know our true selves, and that's a beautiful revelation. So how does the universe serve us? In, in magnificent ways if we allow it to and if we step up in consciousness. So oh, I feel so blessed today, and I feel so grateful for all of you and for the center and for where it's going, and I don't even even know yet. It's, it's bigger than I, in, even I am, but I know that it is moving and living and breathing entity of its own that we're all vibrating in. So I'm grateful for that. So mahalo, and I will now say namaste and thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.
Mahalo. Mahalo. How's everyone doing? Yeah, you feeling good? Yeah, I am. I am too. Oh, the many pieces. The many pieces. I'm the first person to always admit, if it needs to be assembled, I call in someone else. I, and, and here's the deal about that, just because I, I want to clear that up. It has nothing to do with... I am so at home with that now. I used to have that, that, that male guilt nonsense that said, I should be able to do that, I should be able to... And to, to watch somebody just... It's, it's like, ah, oh, it's like magic watching that. And I just don't particularly want to do that. So if, when we buy our home, I always tell Rita, we, I don't do fixer-uppers. Just That won't be Patrick. I, I just, just to let you know. So we cleared all that. Ah, close your eyes for just one moment, if you choose. If not, I just want to... I want to I want to say these words of this talk today. Hmm, take a deep breath. How may I serve you? How may I serve you? How may I serve you? Oh. There's a feeling behind that, yeah? at least for me, how may I serve you? What a, what a wonderful feeling to be, to be served. I have a wonderful body worker that works with me, and he always ends, you have been served. And it's powerful. Because I think that as much as we think in our world, we don't spend a lot of time allowing ourselves to be served. I was a waiter, better known as a server now, um, from probably my 20, probably about 20 years old to probably about 31. And I spent a lot of time because I was an actor. <laughs> so that's what actors do. <laughs> they forgot that sometimes actors should be acting. But in the meantime, you are serving. And I really took a little trip back the last couple days thinking about this idea of when I was a waiter. And I'm not afraid to say this. I was really good at what I did. I loved the idea that I had an opportunity to serve you and have an experience that you did not have to serve yourself. And yes, you paid the bill. And yes, sometimes you tipped. Um, <laughs> but most of the time you tipped. But I'm going to tell you, I learned more in those 10 years of psychology that I went to school, <laughs> of, I went to school later, later on and I spent an incredible amount of money to get my psych degree, when in reality I already had it in those 10 years. And who knew it was really training me to be a minister as well? Because unless you really are standing on this side of how people interact with their food, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. And so what I learned about that, and th here was the good news, and I'm going to be getting into our faithful servant, which Rita talked about, which is the law of our being. But what I realized in my time, my only job was to serve and to give you an experience. But what was really funny is what I really loved about waiting and serving is that it was temporary. No matter what experience I was having with you, you would leave. <laughs> temporary. So I never got all upset when people came in, a few people that like to demand and forgot that I was serving and that I wasn't a servant. Big difference. And I, one thing that I know about that experience of 10 years is that I demanded respect. If I was not respected, I turned it over to someone else and let them go in because I really, from day one, and here's the other thing that I learned, and this is really life learning stuff. I started out, in a restaurant called Alfie's. And it was fast, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, you're calling in the kitchen and there's a whole world going on there. 
But then I, later on in life, I went into fine dining. And what that meant was more money. And I loved the idea that it was instant grab, ah, oh, take it in. But I acted no different in the joint that I started in and my fine dining that I ended in. I did not. I did not change it. You had no better treatment because you were paying $32 for a steak compared to the, you know, daily special. And I really learned about myself that, that this is what life is about. This is about you are authentic, authentic, or you're not. You don't act any better. People say, if I had money, I would really spread it around. Hmm. I question it a little. I question it because we are what we are right here in this moment. I'm either giving and serving now, and I'm not going to serve more when it's more convenient for me. You know, when I have a million dollars, ah, then you'll see some tithing. Actually, that's not statistically true. <laughs> because then you have more that you would give, which frightens you more if you have the consciousness of that. So I'm really been, uh, I've been really learning about that. Now, we have what we call here the law that you hear a lot. It's really not very complicated. It's like a faithful servant. And here's the thing. I had a little list of it. Um, it's not the same as when I waited tables because it, it, there's an exception here. It does not give advice. It does not tell you what the best thing in the restaurant is. Eat this. This is our specials. Everything is special in the universal law. We give it degrees. Not the faithful servant. The faithful servant only knows one thing, and that is to serve us. Serve you. How may I serve you? Better known as, what do you want? <laughs> Just it sounds better, doesn't it? How may I serve you? And I'm going to tell you, it's a very interesting thing for, that I've experienced this. Even when someone says, how may I serve you? There's still that, well, I don't know, I don't want to take, you know, I don't too much. Or it's, it's the universal flow, and it doesn't stop your order because you were too demanding and used a harsh tone. Bless you. It doesn't stop because it got its feelings hurt. It's, it, it's to me, the law, the law, my, it is this thing that was installed in my being. The moment that God had the idea of Patrick and said, I got an idea. It's Patrick. And you're going to feel alone at times. You're going to feel that maybe things aren't really fair. You're going to be scared at times. But I'm going to give you something that you will have with you eternally. And that's a faithful servant that always says yes to you. What a gift. What a gift. And they say, well, what is this law? Where does it, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like. What, it's what it feels like. And we've been operating with this servant for a long time. Now, a lot of people do not like, I've been told in my journey, they don't like the idea of the word servant or that faithful servant or, you know, demanding, commanding. The gift is love. The gift is love, and we can have anything in any moment that we choose. Someone asked me, or actually I heard it uh, in our panels, that we were actually paneling someone. They said, okay, this whole idea of ordering, uh, you know, you can feel the arguing for the limitations coming. Um, it's like, Hmm. Okay, I've ordered a lot of stuff that was never delivered to my table. How do you explain that? I ordered more money in my account. I ordered more love in my life, and it didn't show up. Ha, ha, ha. It's called Stump the Minister. <laughs> it's like, okay, explain that one. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There is a... 
device of our law of our being that only hears the truth and you can't fool it. We get to fool one another with our words, with our, yes, I'm this or this I want, those words. The law of our being is never fooled. What arrived is what somewhere, oh, take a deep breath because you know I love you. <laughs> somewhere, there's a belief system that says I'm not enough. Yeah, oh, I want it. I was doing this the other day. I was, you know, got to get honest. So we lost our cat, Merlin, right? So I was going to try to do a little Jesus thing about bringing him back from the, you know, rise and roll and come out. And <laughs> Rita was gone at the time. Um, but I was doing some powerful voodoo all of a sudden. I was like, well, if Jesus did it, I can do it. And Merlin, come forth. And I was like, you know, all getting very excitable. But then, you know, it's this honesty that always at the end of the day when I go home going, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. But here's the deal with that. I said, why can't I make that happen? And I'm on the path and I'm thinking to myself, and it says, do you really believe that you could pull Merlin out of the ethers? <gasps> Not exactly. <laughs> but you can. So you believe that, and that's what practitioners do. We get an opportunity to believe it for you. But I was so desperate that I thought, I'll use my power. I'll use my power to bring her through the, wherever she's at. Point being is that whatever arrives at my table, I ordered it. And this is, I, I'm going to say it 1,000 times. I'll keep you here till noon till you really hear this one. It's not about blaming yourself and condemning yourself. It's about taking wonderful responsibility that I ordered something. And the greatest news about this that we have as a gift too, I ordered it. I can return it. I ordered this in my life and I went, this doesn't work for me. So you return it to its native nothingness. It was nothing before it was something. So this is such great news today, such celebration of how may I serve you? And if you'll be real quiet in your meditation or just some time with yourself, how may I serve you? And all that came the other day when I was thinking, it was thank you. Thank you for installing this faithful servant that at any time I can use. Now here's the deal. I told Rita, I went to, the, you can imagine our house, right? I went and sat down, I said, I want to use more of my power. We all do. We have incredible power. Nothing to get, nothing to bargain for, negotiate. It's right here, right now. And it's constantly saying, how may I serve you? So I'm going to end once with that. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to really hear not my voice, but that voice of that faithful, wonderful, loving servant, faithful servant that only knows how to serve. That's the job. How may I serve you? How may I serve you? How may I serve you? Say that with me. How may I serve you? How may I serve you? Oh, may I serve you. Now open those beautiful eyes and know that the whole banquet table has been set for you. And all you have to do is choose. Choose what it is from your banquet of life that you want to partake in. Ah, I am complete, and so are you. Namaste. Mm -hmm.
Beautiful. Thank mm. you. I love that song. All righty. So this is our time of affirmative giving. And what we do here is we affirm that we can give. Why? Because we can. And so you also come in here and you give in many ways too. Right now there's a consciousness in this room that has no price tag on it whatsoever. It has no, its, it's value is just what? Universal. Universal. Mm -hmm. So we, in advance, thank not only this room and everything that goes into these baskets, but also people online that are watching right now that, that we know and a lot of people send it in different ways. I just want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you, because it is so incredible that we have the opportunity, the technology, to really reach out. And there are so many people off this island, I've said it before, that are so much on our side. They are so wanting to just watch this, and they want to watch us, and they want to feel this. And even if they're only here once every three years, they believe in us and what we're doing. Because we, here as a collective group, are changing lives. Whether or not we ever find out about it or not. That's the good news, right? Whether we find out about it or not, when you love yourself and you go out into the world, you change lives. And if I don't get up in the morning with any more purpose than that, then I'm okay. Because I, that's the whole thing. And I want to do a tangent, but I've got to do a call out because I didn't get one. Of Ron LeMay, <laughs> my teaching tool was this. I picked up all this trash out in the parking lot, and I was like, look at me, and wow. I came and go, yep, just picked up all that trash out there. But I wasn't quite doing it like John Wayne. But, um, and he said to me, he said, oh, that's wonderful. Just think, someday you'll be able to do that without telling anyone. <laughs> And I don't today. mind standing tall with that because I'm going to tell you something. I always thought of myself as a giver. I'm a giver, you but are. I had to let all of you know how much I was giving. And so this is what I know about that eternal, wonderful thing, that it doesn't matter what is in here or in there. It's what's in here and in giving, and I'm just saying, yes, thank you, my teacher. I am willing to have that as well. So give it up for Ron LeMay. <laughs> And all I have to say is don't ever let that happen again. Okay, uh, so we have a sacred investment affirmation if you'll join us. <laughs> I just uh, love spontaneity. It's in, your, it's in your program. I freely uh, really and joyously give, give from, from the, the abundance, abundance and fullness of, of my overflowing, overflowing wealth, wealth, knowing my gift goes out, love, love as, as it touches and blesses Center, Center for Spiritual Living Kauai, Kauai my life, life and the world. And so it is. We have a Karen Drucker chant, um, gratitude song. Let's join me in it. And it does have some hand motions. Oh, you want. Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me. Oh 
I'm really grateful, so grateful for all of the blessings in these baskets and from afar and from near, but I'm grateful that each of us is in the flow, the flow of energy, the flow of life. We're participating, we're in it, we can't escape it, we're part of it, and thank you. Mahalo, mahalo. So it is. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And now our children are coming up, I believe. There we go. Oh, Beckham is here today. Yay. Yay, you may. Oh, thank you, Beckham. That's so sweet of you. Oh, I think he has something for you, too. You have something for me? Oh. Can I have a hug? Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> You are so sweet. Okay, so watch the speaker. I no, I want not anybody tripping on it. I call once and they never forget. I know. Oh. <laughs> so do we have anything to say? Yeah. Well, we were doing meditation hold today. Hold it. You have a lot in your hands. I'm just yeah. trying to help. Hold on to that. And when you hear this sound, you think compassion, okay? So that's what we did today. Now it's up to Ruby. What are you going to say, Ruth? Ruby's like the youth minister. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Um, we colored um, mandalas. I, my brother helped me with this one. And uh, basically, ugh, we colored this, and then we did meditation, as George said. And then we look at, looked at this picture, and it was like a brown rabbit. But you had to look at it two ways because one way it was like a duck and the other way it was a rabbit and we had to like sit and try and look for the rabbit. And it was like its its beak was the ears of the rabbit and it was like it was turned around. It was so cool. Oh. <laughs> what did you learn from that? Um, that things aren't always what they seem. Mm. Very good. Ooh. Awesome. Well, thank you. Let's give them their affirmation. Okay. It's in your program if you don't remember it. You are amazing. You are perfect. You are magnificent. And we love you. And we love you too, George. All right. Thank you. And all the children out there. I love you, guys. All right. Thank you. Oh, more pictures. Oh. CSL, have fun. That's great. From Lily. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, all right, so we're going to ask the practitioners and ministers that are serving today to come forward, if they want to come forward. So we have what is called affirmative prayer, spiritual mind treatment. If there's something in your life that you feel you want to know more about or expand about, use these lovely women up here. And Rob. And Rob back there. And, and take advantage of having a spiritual mind treatment, which is just affirming that truth for you. And like we were talking before, we live in a creative medium, that law of our being, that, that thing that we're all sitting in together. And as they speak their word, it's felt wherever you choose to accept it and, 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 and allow it. So allow them to help you. And if you want something more deeper, if you really want to, to really delve into your life, you need to set up a session, um, which there's a charge for that. But you can we do do spiritual counseling here, and it's very powerful. But that's like if you want to go deeper and sometimes you have to go a little deeper hmm. so that's it so and uh, just you. over here we have our wonderful building fund and uh that needs to be counted i can see and that will be doing that this, this week, week as well but please be here on the 24th i, I just want to remind for that that meeting if you can because it it truly is a family meeting um this isn't your center pointing at us. It's our center. And I really would like that, no matter how many times you come, no matter how involved you are, to start thinking of it as your family, that it's our center. 
the ownership that comes with our, not, oh, you guys have a really good, no, we are the spiritual leaders, and we're here to lead and to guide a vision, and sometimes you'll love that vision, and sometimes you won't, and whatever it is, that's fine, but please be a part of our family, and so we can uh, do that on the 24th, and in the meantime, you got some change left over, dump it in the old bank over there okay. there we go we start where we are my we friends we start where we are i was going to say something else about that but i forgot okay i think we're ready to end <laughs> been long enough so let's just all stand up <laughs> been yeah. long enough <laughs> it's been long enough let the way of the heart let the way of the heart let the way of the heart shine through oh let the way of the heart let the way of the heart let the way of the heart shine through Love upon love upon love, our Lord to beating is one. Light upon light upon light, shining as bright as the sun. So let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Come through. So what I know is that everything in life is spontaneous, new in every moment. And I am just filled with gratitude. That fountain of you is happening right now. That fountain of you, that fountain of gratitude. And I am so grateful for our wonderful Michelle who does many things, but the announcements, she gets them out and gets them going. So we say thank you. And today our beautiful Malama team with Mary and Sue, Glenn, greeting and allowing that beautiful energy uh, to just come through and our wonderful Roseanne who gave us a wonderful meditation and an affirma affirmative prayer Rob back there, mahalo mahalo and Jonathan for the sound thank you, thank you, thank you hospitality, Ron Stover who takes full ownership full ownership with that wonderful Charles that, that cannot hide, that cannot hide from me because I will find you. You can run, my brother, but you cannot hide. But yeah. And what I know about that is that Maria and Luis, thank you for this wonderful beat, the beat of, of this music that you gave us today. And Janice and George and the kids and Michelle and Stephanie, who are now at this moment counting the abundance from this uh, time together. But most of all, take a moment to thank yourself. Thank yourself and thank these wonderful people that are tuning in. And remember that life is here to serve you and doesn't have any price tag on it. It is just like those beautiful, beautiful fruit trees out on this island that just keep producing and producing and giving and giving and never saying, give back. It's just saying, I'm a giver. So I am blessing each and every one of us today for showing up, to showing up as you, each and every one of us, right here and right now. So I let it go. I let it be with so much gratitude as collectively as one we say. And, and so, so it is. Let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Love upon love upon love. All out to beating is what light upon light upon light, shining as bright as the sun. So let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart. Let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. We're starting in 15 minutes.